Hey, what's up guys? Hard Leg Joe here with your weekly What A Dick Profile. This week, we're looking at Mech Millennium Eye Kaijus. This deck's monster lineup consists of six Kaiju monsters. We're playing two Thunder King, one Dogaron, one Gamma Seal, two Radian, as well as three Manju of the Ten Thousand Hands, three Predaplant Orphis Scorpio, two Predaplant Darlingtonia Cobra, three King of the Swamp, three Millennium Eyes Illusionist, and three Relinquished. Our spells consist of two Polymerization, three Terraforming, one Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, three Cosmic Cyclone, three Relinquished Fusion, three The Kaiju Files, and two Kaiotu Waterfront. The extra deck consists of one Predaplant Chimera Rafflesia, three Millennium Eyes Restrict, one Acid Golem, one Break Sword, one Gram Pulse, one Levier, Zen Mains, Borolo Dragon, Decode Talker, Akashic Magician, Underclock Taker, Link Spider, and Link Karibo. The side deck I'll go over in a moment. So this deck is actually a stun deck that works by combining the power of Millennium Eyes Restrict and Gamma Seal the Sea Turtle Kaiju. Uh, if you're familiar with the new Restrict, I'll start with that. It's a fusion monster. It can be made with Relinquished and any other effect monster. And it has a quick effect that says once per turn, when your opponent activates a monster effect, you can target one monster they control or in their graveyard, and equip it to this card. Not only does this gain attack and defense equal to all the monsters equipped to it, but monsters that share a name with this equipped card can't attack, and all their effects are negated, both their effects on the field as well as their activated effects. That's quite a bit of text. Basically, if your opponent activates a monster effect, you can steal a monster, gain its stats, and negate its effects. Now, since this targets cards both on the field and in the graveyard, you can even negate the effects of hand traps and floating monsters. Plus, not only does it negate that effect, but if your opponent has any other copies of that monster, its effects will be negated as well. And to top it all off, you don't have to target the monster that actually activated the effect. So if your opponent has a copy of a key card already in the grave, and the effect they activate isn't going to destroy this thing, you could steal that card in the grave to prevent them from using other copies of it. Overall, just an amazing stun card, whose only weakness is that if your opponent doesn't activate monster effects, then they can run over it with literally anything, because it starts with zero attack. Uh, fortunately, there are ways to get around this problem. Uh, first of all, there's Millennium Eyes Illusionist, which is a has a quick effect. You can discard it during either player's turn to target one effect monster your opponent controls and attach it to a Relinquished or an Eyes Restrict fusion monster that you control. Uh, also, if a Relinquished or an Eyes Restrict fusion monster is summoned, and this is in the graveyard, you must add it to your hand. It's a strangely mandatory effect, but a nice bit of recycling nonetheless that lets you discard this for card cost or even use it as fusion material and then recover it from the hand without going minus. Uh, the other way to attach a monster without using its effect is actually the main way we summon the monster, Relinquished Fusion. This is a quick play that lets you summon an Eyes Restrict monster by banishing the material from your hand, field, or graveyard. And then perhaps more importantly, during your main phase you can banish this from the graveyard, target one effect monster your opponent controls, and equip it to a Relinquished or an Eyes Restrict monster. Obviously, this is the best card to summon Millennium Eyes Restrict with, since it lets you instantly grab a monster. But it's not the only way to summon. We also play the old-fashioned Polymerization. Uh, obviously, a little worse than this, since you can only use cards from your hand or field, and it doesn't have that additional effect. But since the deck wants to Turbo Out Restrict as fast as possible, it never hurts to have other options. Uh, plus, we're already playing King of the Swamp, which can not only search this by discarding itself, but it can stand in for any named fusion material. So having this is as good as having Relinquish. This plus any effect monster can be used to make Restrict. You can also get Relinquish with Manju of the Ten Thousand Hands, which adds any ritual monster when it's summoned. Just even more ways to make sure you have your fusion material. And then you can search both of the fusion spells with the Preta Plant engine that we're running. If you're unfamiliar with it, Orphis Scorpio is the starter. When it's summoned, you can discard any monster to summon a Preta Plant from the deck except itself. You summon Darling Tonia Cobra, and when it's summoned by the effect of a Preta Plant, you can add Polymerization or a Fusion spell card from your deck to your hand, though you can only use this effect once per duel. Uh, these two are why we play the Chimera Flasia in the extra deck, which can be a decent boss monster if you already have a Fusion in hand and no Relinquish to summon. Plus, if it goes to the graveyard, you could search any of your fusions anyway, so just, just a nice bit of recursion. Uh, these two are also why we play all the rank 3 Ixie monsters in there. 
Uh, I'd recommend Break Sword since it can destroy itself to make room for Restrict in the extra monster zone. And Levier can be pretty nice since you're banishing monsters with Relinquished Fusion. You can summon them back. Uh, the rest are not too important. It's just a toolbox. Play whatever you want. Same thing with the Link monsters. The only really important things are Link Karibo, which you can make using Restrict. Uh, just on the off chance you don't want to leave it on the field. Uh, Akashic Magician to bounce back your Kaijus. And Link Spider to use with your Kaiju tokens. Speaking of the Kaijus, they make up the other half of the deck. And I'm actually not just using them for removal. We play a whole engine. We have the field spell and the, the kaiju files. If you're unfamiliar with them, the field spell gains a counter every time a card goes from the field to the graveyard up to five. And the kaiju files gains a counter every time a kaiju is summoned from the hand or grave. Again, up to five. In addition, if there are three counters on this, you can once per turn search a kaiju monster. And the kaiju files, once per turn, you can destroy a kaiju on either side of the field and replace it with any other kaiju from your deck. We use these two almost entirely for Gamma Seal, which actually has one of the strongest effects of any kaiju, at least in my opinion. It reads, during either player's turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can remove two kaiju counters from anywhere on the field to negate the activation, and if you do, banish that card. As I mentioned before, these two actually make up the win condition. The, I the ideal win condition with this deck is to play your field spell, summon Restrict, give your opponent one of these non-Gamma Seal Kaijus, summon Gamma Seal to your side of the field, and then attach your opponent's Kaiju to the Restrict, usually using the Fusion. Uh, this will give you two monsters, uh, one of which can negate any monster effect, and will have at least 2800 attack, usually 3300 attack. And then you'll have Gamma Seal with one to three negations, depending on how many counters you manage to get on your other two cards. And probably best of all, your opponent can't Kaiju either of these, because you already control a Kaiju. This awesome lock is the main reason we play the Kaiju files, which is admittedly kind of bricky. You might want to replace this if you're trying to be a little bit more competitive. But it does have some pretty good synergy with this. If you can't equip anything to restrict, either because they negate your monster effects, or you had to make it with polymerization, then you can summon a higher attack kaiju to your field, run over a lower attack kaiju, and then swap that out for a gamma sill in defense position that now has a bunch of negates. Speaking of which, your other kaijus also have counter-based effects that you can use in specific situations. Radian can summon a token with the same stats as itself by removing two counters from the field, which can be good, like I said, for Link summoning. Dogaran can remove three counters to destroy all monsters your opponent controls, but it can't attack this turn, which is a nice little field wipe. And Thunder King can remove three counters to make three attacks on monsters this turn, and make it so your opponent can't activate any cards or effects for the rest of this turn. These were all selected just because none of these are quick effects, so if you give them to your opponent, they're not going to be able to activate that effect, except for Gamma Seal, and that's why we only play one. You don't want your opponent negating your stuff if you have the waterfront up with a bunch of counters on it. Of the remaining Kaijus, Thunder King's probably the one I use the most. It's got a whopping 3300 attack, and when you use its effect, you can attack three times, so you can pretty much clear the field with it. And most importantly, it stops your opponent's cards and effects for the rest of the turn. So not only does it save you from battle-related things like evenly matched and floating monsters, but if your opponent has Solemns that they were trying to save for, say, Restrict, they can't activate them after you've activated this. So if you can get this effect off, you can do everything else in your turn without having to worry about it. As for the rest of the deck, we got three Terraforming to search out our field spell. I went with this ratio because these can be a little bricky because they gather counters. You don't want to activate another copy, but if you activate Terraforming while it's out, you can put a counter on this. We've got our one Slumber, which is just a staple in any deck that has more than a few Kaijus. And our spell trap removal for this week is Cosmic Cyclone because we don't want to discard for Twin Twisters and Heavy Storm Duster is a little too slow. And that just brings us to the side deck. Half of these are cards I'd actually run. Mind Control in particular is great against monster-heavy decks like Light Swarms, where your Cosmic Cyclones maybe won't be useful. Not only can you steal a monster for Lynx, but since Restrict is a Relinquished plus any other effect monster, you can use your opponent's monsters as material. And if you use Relinquished Fusion, then the materials are banished, which is even better. You can get rid of things like Fairy Tail Snow. Likewise, if your opponent's playing heavy hand traps, you can use instant fusion, like a couple meta decks are trying to do right now. 
Uh, it can summon Restrict just right off the bat, and then act as a deterrent to keep them from activating hand traps, negate them when they do, let you do the rest of your turn if you want to focus more on kaiju things. Uh, if you're doing that, maybe if you want to try to main Instant Fusion, you, I'd also suggest Faceless Mage. If this card's in your hand or graveyard, and Relinquished or Restrict gets destroyed, you can summon this, and if this goes from the field to the graveyard, you can summon a Relinquished or a Restrict from your graveyard. This is actually a pretty great card against slower decks, because you can float between this and Restrict for days. Um, and it works well with the Instant Fusion, because you're going to summon this, and then it's going to be destroyed in the end phase, and then you can just summon this out. Although, against a faster deck, just ending on this without your negations can often be a death sentence. Other than that, we've just got a couple more Kaijus. You can run two Gamma Seals if you want to back up, or if you just want to attack over it for maximum damage. Just be careful about giving it to your opponent while you have uh, counters out. Uh, likewise, this kaiju can remove three counters to negate a targeting effect and destroy one card on the field, which might be better than Gamma Seal against certain decks. Plus, it's got more attack than Gamma Seal. Uh, the remaining cards are just other options. If you want to play the Ritual for Relinquished, you can. Uh, I found it kind of bricky, especially with the kaijus in there, but if you wanted to drop the kaijus and have more of a theme deck... Uh, you could play that and then put in, like, pre-preparations, which I didn't put here, along with a Karibo engine actually works pretty nice. It has a lot of synergy. The Karibos are all level 1, so you can use them for the tribute. Link Karibo lets you draw a card when you do that. Almost all the Karibos negate attacks, which can help you if you've got a zero attack restrict on the field. And then Kariborn can summon all the Karibos from the graveyard and give you some Link potential. Likewise, if you don't like the Predaplant engine, uh, because it has potential bricks, you could also replace it with the Spellbook Engine for drawing, which works out pretty well, given that you don't normal summon a lot with the Kaijus and the Fusions. Uh, and if you want to make sure that this is always live, you can even take out the Manjus, put in Fusion Conscription, which basically just searches Relinquished, but it's a spell, so it doesn't take up your normal summon. I personally prefer to be able to get right to that Relinquished Fusion and not have to worry on random draws, but this can still be pretty good, and it has a little extra synergy. It's worth mentioning that if you do go the Spellbook route, the new Illusionist cards are Spellcasters, so if you use Spellbook of Knowledge to send them to the grave, it's not really a minus. This one will add itself back to your hand as soon as you summon your Fusion Monster, and this one not only has an effect in the graveyard, but if you've got a Relinquished in the graveyard, you send this to the graveyard with Spellbook of Knowledge, you're summoning that back out again. So a lot of potential with this deck, a lot of things you can do. Let me know how you would improve this, what your kind of build would do. As for me, I'm done for this week. As always, if you'd like to see this in action, you can watch the main video where I play 10 duels against random opponents on YGO Pro. There's a link in the description, as well as on the end card if you want to check that out. Until next week, good luck! and have fun.